never really um, wanted to be normal. Normal has never been something that I've been aiming for. Sometimes it's a bit of a challenge around getting a bit of quiet time. If somebody wants some separate space, obviously we yeah. don't physically have two rooms here. I've known that the traditional nine to five just didn't really work for me. Hi, it's uh, Fruity Louise here and I've gone out in the beautiful countryside and here I'm going to meet some people who live a very, very different life. You know, some people, they live in a big villa and they have a nine to five job, but these people, well, they live, as I said, very differently. And uh, here we have them. It's uh, John and Sophie. And uh, what is so different about your life? Well, I guess geographically, we live in two different places. So in the winter, we're in Thailand and in the summer we come back to the UK and we live in Brighton area in this truck. Right, so this truck is your home half of the year. Yes. All right. We live in, the tr in a, a seven and a half ton truck. Uh, it's, a, it's a converted uh, goods vehicle, basically. It's a heavy goods vehicle where the box at the back uh, has been, uh, coach builders have been through it and put windows in it and sofas. Now uh, this this truck is my project um, and it's pretty much consuming my time full time and has done since we got back. I used to work as an IT consultant. I did that for over 20 years, sort of 24, 25 years. In the UK I do some body work but I'm also a coach, I'm a sex coach. So I'm, yeah, I'm either doing online sessions with my clients, coaching clients, or I'm doing body work sessions at another location. Uh, after I quit the IT business, I had money from the sale of my house. Um, so I, I was living off savings for a few years, and uh, then I had a child with Sophie, um, and so she decided to keep working, uh, and I became a sort of a stay-at-home dad. And uh, is it just the two of you? No, we have a little one in there, three, three and a half year old. And uh, he's coming with you to Thailand and yeah. yep. living with you yep. here in a truck in England. Yeah. Just that one go. These are going to big one. What colours are they? My son loves the truck. He, um, I, I remember in, when we were in Thailand, I was saying to him, I was showing him the pictures of the truck because he loves vehicles, he loves anything with wheels. And I was saying, we're going to buy that truck, we're going to live in that truck. And um, yeah, he was excited, but now it's, yeah, it's reality for him. He's, he's used to it. It's funny, he sees um, other vehicles on the street, like maybe a digger or something that's, you know, doing some road works. And he says, can we buy that, mum? <laughs> you also eat a very different diet. Can you talk about that? Uh, we eat a plant-based diet, uh, pretty much all raw little bit of cooked food. So does that mean raw vegetables or fruit? Yeah, or? lots of fruit, yeah, most, fruit mostly veg. fruit, lots of salads, um, yeah. no animal products, no bread, no pasta, hmm. no oil, no salt. Do you have any health concerns eating this way? I have a history of health issues and most of those I've resolved through eating this way and through making other positive changes in my, in my lifestyle. So no, we're I mean, John is quite science-based and I've learned a lot from him, so we research things. If we have a question or a problem, we research things. But the resounding answer seems to be stay eating a plant-based, low-fat, high-raw diet. So you can see that our animal products are less, are lower proportion of carbohydrate, as you would expect. Um, I've stayed vegan now um, for over 20 years, so that's really worked out fine for me. And the raw thing just really stepped up and I just had this incredible energy uh, for the first, I don't know, nine or ten months. Um, my sleep cycles changed, so I needed much less sleep. Um, I had huge energy during the day as well, it was just fantastic. I got a mountain bike, um, I started doing cross-country running, which is something I was lousy at at school. You know, I was the, the guy plodding at the back of the cross-country run, um, just hating the sort of the mud and everything. So this is our bed area, our little cubby hole. We've got a TV up there because the last owner had quite a lot of televisions. Um, it's quite nice to watch a movie up there. This is our kitchen area. 
We do have a little extra piece of kitchen unit there, but it's quite a small space to prepare food in. So here? Yes. Right. Which means you can't then walk from one side of the truck to the other, so it's, it's a compromise. Uh, we have a fridge here that runs from gas or electric, and that's the electric is topped up by our solar panels on the roof. It's, it's taken a sort of best part of a couple of months, I guess, to to get the solar thing going. But it's it's just fantastic to to um, take that power from the sun, and we use it for our laptops, and we use it for um, powering our fridge partially during the day because our fridge works off gas basically. We have LED lights, so they're very low power output. Um, we have a gen we have an onboard generator that we didn't even know this this. We knew nothing about generators when we bought our truck, but it means that if we need something extra, like we power a blender sometimes to make smoothies, we have that there just in case. We have a microwave, which we are definitely going to get rid of, and we'd like to put a dehydrator in to make some raw food treats. A little bit of storage space, cupboards, and this is our bathroom. We get water from uh, public water taps so we're not completely off the grid and we still you know we park up near a city because we still you know use washing machines in laundrettes or friends washing machines so this yeah. is our living space um, this table actually com this table area converts into a double bed so we end up with one double bed here mm. and a very small single bed here and a bit of a bridging bed in there we've had uh, four children and two adults sleep comfortably in this truck and what is it like to live three people in in this truck? Three is quite comfortable, three's, isn't it? Yeah, three is comfortable. <laughs> Having six in here for our... Uh, last week we were on a holiday, we went to a home education camping festival and we had six in then and we sometimes had two friends over for dinner so we had eight for dinner most evenings yeah. and that was a squeeze. Yeah. So when everybody went home and it was just back to us three it felt like a mansion again. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes it really... it, it's a bit of a challenge around getting a bit of quiet time if somebody wants some separate space obviously we yeah. don't physically have two rooms here. Well we do, we have um, the cab. So yeah we use the cab a bit for like office space or, or private space so if you want to do a Skype session with somebody privately you can go yeah. into the cab to do that. Yeah. Um, but that yeah that's our, a little bit of a limitation. And why did you oh, choose to do it this way? I think, well, when we were in Thailand this time, it was our second time in Thailand, we stayed for six months, and um, we knew that we were coming back to the UK, and we thought at first that we would rent a flat, but whenever we thought about that whole process of looking at a place, dealing with landlords, dealing with estate agents, we just, we just didn't want to come back to the UK. There's always difficulties with flats. Um, when you rent in this country, it's it's quite expensive, and um, sometimes the landlords or landladies can be a bit of a pain, <laughs> and the properties are like <laughs> like grubby and not very well looked after. So it's not very pleasant. Even before I conceived my son, I knew that we would be a homeschooling family if we ever had kids. It, it sounds like it doesn't make sense, but I've I've had quite a lot of exposure to children who are home educated. I think I always knew that that was the way for us and, and in, in a way it is because we are a little bit different. I think it's then easier for kids to be home educated because they don't have to go into an institution where they're the different one, like they have a different diet and yeah they have a lifestyle that's different so they stick out. I, I wouldn't want to do that to, to a child. And I feel really confident that we can do better than most schools can common thing that people ask about when they have concerns about home education is socialization because I think a lot of people assume that it's you at home with your child all the time and it's completely the opposite so my experience of it um, both, both in Brighton where we live and when I've seen other people doing it is that the home ed people are the busiest ones I've ever met like they have an activity every day or maybe two choices every day that they can go out and do they meet other home educated children, they go on outings or just on a family outing together. So what are you making? So this is a snack that my son really enjoys, he calls it tahini apple and it's just basically 
an apple and tahini sandwich. I want them. So we cut the slices quite thin. I want them tahini bubble. You want some? It's coming. It's coming. So how long have you been living in the truck? Uh, actually, just over two months. I uh, We just got back from Thailand and we actually bought this truck uh, before we arrived back from Thailand. We bought it. Uh, from someone on eBay. The decision to buy the truck, well it, it was kind of, it was mine ultimately because the money was mine, but John was with me all the way on it. Um, we had we had seen the truck on eBay and we had both said, wow, yeah, that, that would be our dream vehicle if we were to live in a vehicle. And I'd, I hadn't exactly said to him, look, I want to buy it. But uh, we had some money come through that day and it was possible that we could buy it. And John had gone out, but he was arriving back literally minutes before the, the eBay um, auction ended. So I said, he came in the door and I said, come in here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy that truck. And he was like, okay, okay. And he stood by me and I'd hit the, the button to say buy. And then we had to just put in like a slightly higher price and then hit it again. And then we got it. And it was just so exciting. So we flew home to Heathrow Airport and then we went to Northampton to pick it up. And yeah, that was not something I'd advise because <laughs> we were very tired. It was exciting, but I think we realized as well that we had a lot of, uh, a bit of a steep learning curve because we've never lived in a vehicle before. It's been a challenge. I don't think we realized how much of a project we were taking on. Um, we've since we've since heard from various people that we've bought a very good truck mechanically, but there were quite a few issues inside the truck in the living space that we needed to fix and resolve. So, yeah, it's been a full-time project. <laughs> have you regretted it? No, I um I haven't regretted it, but I have felt like I hadn't considered the work involved in, in not only transitioning from living in Thailand to living in the UK, but transitioning from living in rental apartments to living in a vehicle and all the things you have to learn about where you can park and how to work with your power situation, solar, generator, all these people that we've had to get help with, with um, fixing things, repairing things. So We have a chemical toilet uh, which we have to find a special place to empty. Um, so really it's, it's yeah, the travelling lifestyle has uh, some limitations and, uh, and jobs that keep you uh, busy. But in the interesting thing is you get to know exactly what you're using. The high of it is that we get to live in our favourite parks. It's ready, it's ready. We get to live in nature a lot more. So in the past we've lived... In the past we've lived in a in a flat and that was quite an indoor life so we lived in a basement flat previously and that's not very pleasant um, yeah and we, we're quite outdoorsy people so being in nature being closer to nature really suits us um, we made a decision over the last year or so that we were gonna live half the year in Thailand and half the year in the UK because there's many things that we love about the UK but there's a lot of things that we don't like and one of them is the long, cold, dark winters. So we live um, six, five or six months in Thailand and then the rest of the time in, in the UK. I was very resistant to, to going to Thailand. Um, I, I already felt like there'd been a lot of change in my life already. Um, so it was, it was difficult for me to, to go along with the trip to Thailand. So I did struggle with it a bit, but uh, once we got there and kind of started to settle in a bit, um, it was it was really quite exciting. I think my son really enjoys traveling. I have noticed when we first came back to Thailand he was a little bit unsettled and I'm not surprised because we all felt unsettled but now it's it's lovely to hear him talk because he has this reference of Thailand in his life like sometimes he'll say uh, when we go to Thailand we can buy that Lego and <laughs> I don't know where he's got that idea because Lego it's better to buy Lego here but he's yeah, I said to him the other day, do you want to go back to Thailand? And he said, yes, yes. So, yeah, he loves it. I live a completely different life um, from my sort of 20 years of working in the IT industry and sitting at a desk. And I don't know that it was really a choice. It just seemed to be like the way my life was going. Um, 
yeah, it's it's not been like a, a plan or a purpose, but I've known that the traditional nine to five just didn't really work for me. I've never really um, wanted to be normal. Normal has never been something that I've been aiming for. So my work isn't all that usual. I don't meet many other people who do what I do. Um, but then the fact that I work online gives me that freedom, gives us that freedom to go away. And yeah, it's a bit unconventional that John doesn't earn the money I do. And yeah, I don't know. We just make choices given because of what we want in the moment. And we don't really think about does it fit in or is it normal. What's your vision for the future for your life? Um, well, I'm, I'm hoping to start a business at some point. Uh, there's a bit of a transitional phase I need to go to um, from coming a bit more out, out of the dad role and we're working on that at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to start my own business up and I'm very much into the entrepreneur and, and doing things on YouTube. Um, I have some YouTube channels as well. In 10 years time, I would like to have more children. Um, I would like to have, yeah, I'd like to have a home in Thailand, it's not a base in Thailand. And I have a lot of goals and dreams for my business. I want to be able to have a much broader reach. I want to be speaking to a much bigger audience. It's very important for me to bring a sex positive attitude to culture now, to, to push out the shame and the fear and the, the myths and the confusion around sex. I see myself living between Thailand and in the van, uh, perhaps for, I don't know, one or two years. Um, I think if we have another child, it will be more uh, a requirement to settle down a bit more. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very difficult to, to not have the tropics and the cheap food and, and the lower cost of living. So maybe we will find a way of settling in the tropics. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it, it's better for children maybe to have a bit more of a settled life at some point so that they can build up a, a base of, of friends and some community around them that's a bit more stable. So yeah, hopefully it, we'll, we'll get into knowing the real answer to that at some point um, in the next year or two. If you would like to know more about how you can improve your health naturally, there are two things you can do right now. Firstly, you can subscribe to my channel here on YouTube, and that way you'll receive videos every time I make a new one. Secondly, you can go to my website. It's www.frudiloo.com. Here you can get a get started guide where I tell you all about the diet and lifestyle that I used. And uh, you can also download my top five tips totally free. All you gotta do is click on the screen right here.